Hi, um, I'm Stephanie Tomin. I'm um, continuing with the advanced spreadsheets uh, videos, the videos for the lectures, and I'm also doing videos that cover the weekly revision exercises that go with these lectures. I'll be doing those separately after this session. So what we're looking at this time, if we go to the next slide, is week six, the final week in the lecture series, and it's going to be covering these areas that are also in the manual, remember, it's all connected up. And we've got charts, data tables, macros, auditing, and tracking changes. And the weekly revision exercise questions that go with those uh, will be the questions 39 to 48, which I will do in a separate video following this. So remember, when we're looking for our files to use for these lectures, we need to make sure we are in the lecture materials on OLA and um, make sure that you see a week six, these sections, and when you open it up, you should see exactly the same as you have here. The first folder we're doing today, demonstrating is 15 and 16 sections, which is charts and data tables. So we'll open those up and open up the first one, charts. Charts are pretty straightforward. Um, I'm sure you've done a lot of these things before, at least some of them. So we're starting with the formatting worksheet right at the beginning. I'm just going to bring this down for you so that you can see the areas of the syllabus that we, I'm going to demonstrate. So these are the areas you would be expected to know for the exam. So moving a legend, very straightforward. You can either right click on all of these features and you can format a legend and that would bring up a side um, task pane. Or an easier way is to use what they call the chart element. So when you're clicked on the chart, you click off, the elements have gone, click on it, the elements are there. So if you go to chart elements, there's your legend area there. And then you can move it um, and you can bring up more options, which is once again um, the task pane that I showed earlier and on the right click. And you can even just click on it and delete it. OK, let's bring that back in. So with regard to gap width, if you right click on one of the data series, the format data series appears on the right click. If you click that, once again, you get the pane that comes with it, the task pane. And there's your gap um, with the area there. And you can see that if you keep going, you'll see the gap changing on the data series. Okay. Removing a turnover series and then adding it again. If we look down here, the green the data series is the turnover. Just click off. If you click on, you'll see the handles on each turnover. You can just hit the delete key and that will remove it from the data series without affecting the data. If I just undo that, keep an eye on the turnover information in the data sheet. Now, because I clicked on the turnover here and you can see the handles activated, you can also see that that's the activation data there. And this is how we can move data off the spreadsheet. If I click on the spending one and I use that, I can then remove the December data there too. So it's whatever's activated here when you created your chart is what's being reflected in your spreadsheet. So let's just undo on both of those, they're back. So we deleted the turnover. I'm going to pop the turnover back in. So if we go to these chart tool tabs here, you've got design area and you have a formatting area. I'm going to use the design chart tools tab. And you have a select data here. This select data, we can now add that turnover again. So if we add a data series, our data series name is going to be turnover and we can pick that up from A4 on the spreadsheet. And then the series of data, we click on there and expand it, it's going to be the data values that go with it that we want to be seen in our chart below. We OK that and you can see already even before I OK, that has been added. So it's took its series name from there and its sheet from data from there. If I click on it, it's back again. 
The next bit is talking about removing data series from the spending without deleting it. Remember how we did that? We click on the data series spending and then we can just move that away and that would do that. We're going to change the spending chart line type to a line chart. So the spending once again the purple, right click, change the series chart type. You don't use up here, if you use up here both will change into line charts. So what we need to do is go down here. So we're changing the spending one. So it's the spending one we're picking up and we're changing it to a line chart and then OK. All right. And then the final thing is move it to a new sheet. So we're not going to cut it and paste it somewhere. We're actually going to move it properly. So if you right click, you get the option to move chart. However, depending on where you right click, you may or may not get this option, so be aware. So obviously right click there, you're going to get things to do with the legend. If you right click there, you get things to do with the formatting the data series here, it'll be a plot area, etc. Whereas here, on the chart area, you will get the chance to move the chart and you can move it into a new sheet and you can rename it there. So we'll call it chart one. There it is on a brand new sheet. And then you can move it back again, back into an object within a sheet, and it's in the formatting sheet. OK, and then the chart with the sheet on its own, with the chart has gone, and we're back to a formatting sheet, pair sheet. And then you can obviously make it bigger as you wish. The next sheet we're going to look at and the thing on the syllabus is spark lines. So this is in the new syllabus um, being introduced, quite, quite straightforward. So as it says, it's a way of doing things graphically. So it's a good way of seeing things visually and graphically and it shows mapping and changes over time. So if we look at this one here, that's already been done. This is a group. So if we right click on the spark lines, you will see the spark lines feature coming up. So in the exam, they may ask you to edit or to clear spark lines. So you've got your edit group. This is not a single one. You click on there. You can see that it's based on B4 to M4, 14, sorry. And then the location of it is that data range there. So if we cancel that and we clear it, so remember we have to right click, not doing a delete, into here, let's clear that group so it's gone now highlight the range where you want to so we want that data changes over here to be visually seen down here so we go into the insert tab find the spark lines the line area the data is going to be b4 to m14 and it's already put it in because we highlighted it before we did but if you wanted to put it in then you could then when you're okay those visual Graphics will come up. You can see the 10 is not doing much. But it's going across. What's going across there is going down here. It's a single one. So if we right click and we look at this one, Spark Lines, and we go to edit the single group, this is based on just that data B14 to, to there. You can see the data, how it goes along and goes up. If we look at this one and we click in here and we do this single one across here, then we can auto fill in. So actually what we can do is go to the insert, let's click on the line again. Our data range is going to be whoops, all of there, like we did before, and we've got it in 04. So if we OK, it'll do that. But if we come here and we highlight it to go down the range like we did before, then it will complete that range. And you can see it's exactly the same range of data range there. So just be aware of that. Remember, everything for Spark Lines, if they're already existing, is on a right click. And you can do everything you need to do in there. OK? And you can see I've just cleared that. Moving on then, continuing with charts, we've got about um, formatting the um, axis. So this is the y-axis here. So we want us to change this y-axis. So to activate your y-axis, double click on it. And then you'll brought, you get the format axis uh, task pane coming up. And wants us to change it to, I might in the test ask you to do this, change the figures. It's going to be something sensible because it's got to be divisible down here. So it looks right. 
Then if you're asked to use a label, you need to be aware that the labels are here. So you're not typing in a label, it's sat there already. When I click on it, you can see the thousands appears here and the data changes there. So we'll take it off. Back to none, you can see how that changes. I may ask you to use thousands, a hundred or something else. When it comes to changing these numbers, the formatting of the numbers, if you go all the way down, you have an area called number here. Let's bring it down. When I select it, this comes becomes available and you can find currency in here and lots of other things as well. All the stuff that you would find in the normal formatting area within um, spreadsheets. And you can change the decimal places to zero. And if you wanted to, you could change uh, this to a different, you could have a euro or something. I'm going to leave it in pounds. And you can see that the format code is all there. And that's changed. And then they've changed to pounds. So that's everything we've done. Thousand separator, if you're asked about it in the test, if you scroll down here, and you'll see a little tick box. Is up. If we go back to number, and there it's there. That's your usual, but it has to be there. If you're in currency, you can't see it. But if you're in number, and they ask you to use the thousand separator, because if we've got that on, and we haven't got the thousands label all the way up there to none, you can see the separator there. Let's try and take that off now. Remember, it's got to be a number to be able to see it. Take it off, and it changes to how a graph chart. And we really should be in the uh, form tabs, but we're just in currency for fun. We've got a naught decimal places, thousand separator, we know where it is now, and then that's done. All those areas you need to think about in the exam for syllabus. It comes to fill, pretty straightforward. You've got gradient fills, you've got picture fills, and when you do picture, you will get textures automatically, and there's your textures there. Okay, so although um, I've not really done anything, notice how my fill is applied to the chart area. And do that. And you can see that if I click on these, that's what now will apply. If we go into our different types of texture, it's only affecting those. So remember where you are. In a chart will make a difference when you change it in the exam so if you just clicked willy-nilly in here and you go in and you're asked to put in a texture you can see what will happen okay so let's go back to no fill when we look at the data labels area you can see um, that these all have outside end data labels if I click on them like I just did and you can see the handles on each one and you can hit the delete key and remove them all so a right click on a data series going into add data labels will put them on outside end automatically or by default. However, if you're asked to do something else, it's a much easier way. Make sure they're all clicked as they are. Go into your chart elements, tick your data labels, and then on the options, you have all of the different options that you'd like to use. If there's an option that's not there, you can click on the more, it might be that they want you to take the value off um, completely. If we go back to the close that down, go back to your elements, data labels, more options, they may want you to put the category name and take the value off. It may be the series name and take those off. So be aware that there might be different ways of them wanting you to display those data labels, but nothing more than that. So nice and easy. If you only need to ask to do them, you can do a single right click for um, outside end, otherwise use your chart elements. Very simple. Okay, moving on to secondary axis, another thing that's very simple. If you right click on the line chart, make sure you're on it, format data series, you will get that automatically coming up. Then when you click on there and we close this, you can see that it now has a secondary axis. 
Secondary access obviously is used if you've got very different data. If you also click on the next one, another part of the data series could be about filling with a picture or an image. So to do that, you know how we did when I said the word filling, that was a clue. Go into the fill and into the picture. You can pick up either a pitch from there, but in the exam, you're going to go and get yours from the Z drive. So we're going to browse through. I'm going to browse to my desktop, which is where I left my, my files for this. So it's nice and usually nice and quick. I can just get this to come there. There we go, into the folder, there you go, into the, and pick it up, and then put it in the computer picture. So remember, if they ask you to fill with an image or picture, you will find it in the Z drive, and everything comes from the Z drive. So remember, it's a right click, and go through the fill option there, and that will fill. So we've covered that for charts with regard to all of the things that you need for your syllabus or for your exam. We're going to have a quick look now at data tables. So data tables, part of the charts area. I'm going to open that one up from our lecture materials. And we're going to look at this. So what I've done is a number of examples. We're going to go through them all. So one input data table is used to see how a variable changes. And this is a good example for repayments on a loan or a mortgage, if you like. So as interest changes, the amount payable changes automatically. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to change this so that we have a series of it going up at quarter percent. So if we go highlight the data range, go into the fill drop down here and series, as it's got here, the step values are going to be 0 0.0025 for a quarter, OK. And now that's going up in a quarter percent all the way through. The rule for a data table is you must have a formula or a function in it in order for it to work. And you can see that we do have one in here in the corner. So when you highlight a one input data table, you must highlight everything, including that and function or formula and it does mean like you get a blank here but that's quite normal so in order to use the feature we go to data tab which as you know has a lot of the features in it what if analysis and data table so we want to find out what happens when this uh, interest rate if you like changes what's the amount we have to pay back if that changes on a loan amount of fifty thousand pounds so when you see the row input cell and the column input cell, what you've got to think about in the exam and in life is what are we filling in? And we're filling in a column input. So we're going down the column. So I'm going to click in there and I know that I'm looking at interest rates. So that's the one I'll click on, the E4, to show that that's what I'm going to be checking. So it goes in automatically, I OK. And you can see how quickly that happens. And if we look at the 8% here, and I highlight it in yellow, you can see it's exactly the same as that there, so 8%. If we changed, the interest rate changed automatically, so if it went down, you can see how much less we're paying as the interest rate goes down. So it's a really quick way. If you try to undo in the exam, it'll undo my colours, but it won't undo the actual data table. Because if we do control, remember grave accent key, shortcut key for back end formula view. Above the tab, tap that key, and you can see why you can't undo. And then back into values again. So in the, the exam, if you don't quite get this right, if you went into the row uh, input instead of the column input area, you would just delete that and do it again. OK, that's all you need to do. If we look at the two table input, this input data table shows that we have, as we did before, we've got the, um, if we look at the first one, the one, we did it with the 360 terms. Look at two, there's our 360 there. 
we go down to our 8%, there it is, that's the value we got before. But this two input table is a bit more complicated than that, so we're going to be inputting the row and the column. So if we take out the previous data, that we've already done, delete it, remember we have to have a function or formula in the data table, whether it's a one or a two, and it needs to be included. So once again, I can do that, highlight it, highlight the area. Okay, this is what we're going to fill in with our data table details. So we're into the data tab, what if analysis tab, data table. Now remember last time we did the column input, so we could do that again. We know that the column input is the interest rate, because that's what we're going to find out going down these terms. Length of time we're paying it. So that means the row going across is the terms in months. So that's the one we're going to put into our row input cell. When we OK, it automatically completes it and it already shows the one we had previously. So let's try that one more time. Let's delete it. Oops. Escape. Pick it up again. Get locked in a cell. Always use escape. That's done it. So we're highlighting the whole thing, not just the area with the data table info. Remember your data tab, what if analysis data tables? The row input is going to be the terms, payments, number of payments, and the column input is going to be the going down the interest rates. And there you go. So there's a couple of um, extra bits on here just to help to remind you when you're doing revision. And I put them in here and pop that uh, print shot of the dialog box there. The one I want to look at um, once you've had a little go yourselves with practice, etc., is this one right at the end of the sheet. It's called Try This. This is quite typical of an exam question in that. If you see, I know I've highlighted C11 in green, but that won't be happening in the exam. But it's just for demo purposes and for, for learning. Our formula or function is in there. It's not within the data input sheet. So this uh, one input data table needs to have that there so we can include it. So in order to bring it there, instead of copying and pasting, which doesn't like, we're going to link it. So use an equal sign, click on the, the cell where the functional formula is, enter it in, and it now appears there. And then what you can do is you can go on to do what you would normally do, which is using your um, data tab in there, into your data table. Your one input data table is going to be interest rates, OK, and it works. If you do it without that there, it will not work. OK, so remember that in the exam, that they may have it outside of the cell range whereby you're using the one input data table um, feature and it won't work unless you bring it in and bring it in using a linking the cell rather than copy and paste. OK, so that's the data tables. I'm just going to not save those. And what I'm going to do now is going to finish this one and we're going to be moving on in the next series onto the macros.